Hey guys and welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today we're going to be talking about anticipation and uh, proper instrument passing because instrument passing doesn't really need its own video. It's a pretty quick one. But anticipation is something that a lot of you guys out there have been asking about. And uh, let's talk about it. So when talking about anticipation in the OR, it really breaks down into two things. And that is a general knowledge uh, of anticipation. And that type of anticipation can be used across the board on all specialties, on all cases. It's you know knowing when you need to use a knife and then a bobe and then a scissor and then you know ties and stuff like that. These are all general things that you could use across the board on all specialties. But there's also a separate type of anticipation and that comes when you really start working in a specialty a lot and maybe working with a certain surgeon a lot and that type of that type of anticipation comes just with experience and with repetition in the cases you start to be able to memorize the steps of the procedure so you'll already know what the surgeon's going to need as the surgery goes on that takes time can't really teach you that. You just have to learn that on your own by doing the cases it's, itself. You just you have to do the cases to learn that type of anticipation. Uh, that's like a step above general anticipation. Uh, when you start working in a specialty and you're working with that same doctor all the time, it's it's a great thing. It really is because you really start to form a relationship and you really start to form that kind of OR uh, family when you come into work. And the surgeon knows, you know, when they see you in their room, they're stress free because they know you have everything and that it's going to be a smooth case because you know what you're doing and you know the surgery step by step. It just, it takes time. I can't teach you that. It just takes time. However, I can teach you the general type of anticipation and that type of anticipation is very easy and it'll come to you very easily uh, even while you're in school uh, you know doing your clinicals and stuff like that you'll really start to get a grasp for certain things that you can anticipate very easily so I'm going to show you four steps of anticipation for basically any surgery and this will be this will be like the the opening anticipation to any surgery really any surgery uh, it's going to start with your knife blade after the timeout. Uh, you know, you're going to need a knife blade because you have to open up the skin. After they use that knife blade, it's the bobe. You should already have the bobe ready, ready in your hand, ready to pass to you know the surgeon as soon as they put that sharp down. As soon as they're using that bobe, they will use a retractor. The retractor comes next. Uh, sometimes it can it can go back and forth with a forcep, but 99% of the time it's going to be a retractor next. It could be a self-retainer retractor, you know, like the Wheatlander, or it could be, you know, something like a, a small Army Navy or, or Rich or something like that, depending on the case and depending on the surgeon, you know, what type of retractor they like to use. The fourth thing is the forcep. So they're going to have a bobe in one hand, a forcep in the other. The forcep is basically, its use is basically like their fingers. This, this is just like, these are like long fingers to them. You know, grabbing tissue and counter traction of tissue so they can bovi and, and dissect out uh, their, their structures that they're trying to dissect out. Those four steps are used across the board for pretty much any case that you do in the OR. You should be able to anticipate those four things easily, easily through any case that you do inside the OR. When it comes to specialty things like, uh, you know, laparoscopic surgery, any type of like scope surgeries and stuff like that, those might be different. Those four steps kind of relate to open surgeries, could be small open hernias or, you know, a laparotomy or something like that. Those steps are used for those, those open type procedures. Steps for a laparoscopic procedure are a little different. You know, it's more of like, more of just like a knife blade and then trocar, you know, right in there. Um, 
but those four steps are used for the majority of cases across the board and, then, and you will be able to use that. Now going deeper past the, uh, the, four, the four steps there, if you're going to be like dissecting out a vascular structure, a lot of the times you'll see a surgeon go from a bobe to a scissor. And the reason for that is the closer and closer they get to those, those vascular structures, or maybe there's like a, there's a nerve around that structure that's close by, they'll start to use, they'll start to use a scissor. A scissor is more blunt, they can bluntly dissect instead of using that cautery and possibly harming something that they do not want to harm. Um, goes in even deeper than that if you know there's veins in the way that they might want to possibly clip uh, you might need to use a right angle to dissect around that vein and maybe they'll clip both sides sides of the vein uh, maybe they'll just use two ties to go around the vein and and tie off the vein vessel loops around arteries that type of stuff I mean there's 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 a ton of things that you can learn and and do the more and more in depth I get with this, the more and more I'm realizing that a lot of it does come with experience and actually doing the surgeries themselves. I mean, I could write out, I could write out step by step so many surgeries that I do in the OR. I could write every little piece step by step and it just, it's come from experience. But just start with those four steps in anticipation. And if you really want to go further than that, I want to say, pay attention in surgery. That is by far the biggest teacher for you. I can, teach, I can only teach you so much, but actually watching the surgery and actually watching the surgeon will better, will better you and it'll better your understanding of the surgery better than anything I say on here. Uh, it really comes down to watching the surgery and paying attention to what the surgeon is doing. Now when it comes to closing, closing is uh, something that you can easily anticipate, just kind of like, uh, kind of like opening uh, is, and obviously it's needle holders and a scissor. If you know a surgeon is going to be using a suture, you know eventually they're going to be needing a scissor. So always have that scissor in hand after you pass a suture to a surgeon. There's no point in not having it. I, I don't understand sometimes why people, uh, I don't know, people are just kind of airy sometimes. It happens to me sometimes too. I'm just thinking about something else maybe. I don't know what it is. But always, when you're passing a suture to a surgeon, have a scissor. It's as simple as that. Now, on to instrument passing. Uh, instrument passing is something you guys have wanted to talk about a lot. I don't find it to be like really a, a really in-depth topic. Uh, really when it comes to passing, I like to, I, I kind of talked about it previously, I think in, uh, in one of the like, Sharps video, I believe it was. Uh, I like to hold my, my needle holders or pretty much any of these instruments, I like to hold closer to the tip because it gives you more kind of snap. In the, in the instrument itself. And when the surgeon puts their hand out, they need to be able to feel that instrument in their hand so they can grasp it. Uh, if you're too light with it, they're just, they're gonna complain about it. Now you don't need to like, totally Hulk smash it into their hands. And I will not be bullied by that. But, I'm just, that you need to let them know that it's there and that it's in their hands. So again, I like to hold it a little bit closer to the top of the instrument and just place it right in there. Um, same thing kind of goes with uh, like maybe like Wheatlanders and Gelpies. Uh, again, I like to hold it closer to the tip. Gelpies are a little bit, uh, a little bit freakier because they have such, you know, sharp little tips. So just keep your hands away, but kind of hold it near the top so you can get that, get that nice little snap. Um, when it comes to rakes and sends, stuff like that, I, I like to play, I like to kind of pass these like I pass a sharp. Uh, again, I talked about the sharp video, all, all that stuff about how to pass instruments and pass sharps, and I'll do the same exact thing. I hold this sen and I hold the, the four prong rakes just like I hold a sharp because uh, 
These things are sharp, man. These are, these are no joke. And passing your retractors, this really depends on you and you paying attention to the surgery. So if you're paying attention to the surgery and you're noticing that they're about to need a retractor, you should know first off what type of retractor they need depending on the surgeon. So if you know for a fact they're going to be using a Richardson, you should be able to anticipate just by looking down at that incision whether or not you're going to need the deeper part of the Richardson or the, uh, the more shallow part of the Richardson. And when you place it in their hand, I like to just kind of hold it on one end and just boom, place it, place it in their hand so they can use it right away. It's, it's all about placing stuff in their hands as they're going to use it as well. I can't tell you that enough. A sharp, placing it in their hand, boom, right away. And this is how they're going to use it and retract. Instruments are not always passed in a, in a flat way. You're, you're not always placing the, uh, the finger rings in a hand of a surgeon. If you're noticing that the surgeon is using it, you know, maybe like this, you're, you're going to pass it to him like this. What's he going to do? What's he or she going to do, the surgeon? You're going to place it in their hand like this and then they have to fumble around with it and then move it around? No. No. You should be able to recognize how the surgeon is going to want that in their hands. And you may not always know right away that they need it in their hands like that, but if they're using a sponge stick or something and they, maybe they ask for a second sponge stick, you can get it right away still holding on to the tip of the sponge stick. But instead of placing it like this in their hand, you're just gonna go ahead and place it in right like they're gonna use it. Another example I can give for that is like the, like the big bone cutters and stuff like that you'll see in, uh, in ortho. I mean, these things are, they're big. And if you go ahead and you're holding on to the top of it and you just, you know, give it to the surgeon like this, they're gonna have to flip it around, hold both ends of it, just to, just to use it. Instead of giving it to them like this, give it to them the way they're gonna use it. It's, it's all about giving instruments to the surgeon the way they're gonna use it. It just, it helps streamline surgery and uh, that's what we want. That's what we want. We don't want a stressful surgeon in the OR. That sucks, that really sucks. Forceps are kind of the same way. I'll pass it, I'll hold on to the tips of the forcep, and they'll put their hand out, and I'll just kind of place it right in the crease between their, their thumb and forefinger, and I'll just place it right there. Smack it in that little crease, just so they, have, uh, just so they can feel it. Um, other times when maybe I've got both hands working and moving pretty quickly, I will hold on to the end of it and uh, just go past their fingers. And, and place it right there. You can do that as well. Just depends though. Really just depends. All right guys. Uh, so, anticipation and instrument passing. Anticipation has gotta be one of the most important skills you have in the OR. And it really comes down to you. Like how much you want to put into it. If you just want to be kind of like a lazy tech about it and just do like the bare minimum, uh, you'll basically just be using those four basic steps and that's like, that's like the gist of, of your anticipation. Um, but if you really want to dive deep and, and take a step above to be that extraordinary tech and uh, that extraordinary partner in, in the OR and, and being a part of that OR team, you've got to pay attention to the surgery. You've got to learn the steps of the surgery, of what the surgeon is doing. Pay attention, absolutely pay attention. And remember to always pass the instrument as the surgeon is going to use it. They don't wanna fumble around with stuff while they're looking at the field. Pass it to them like they're gonna use it. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it, I appreciate you. Love all the new subscribers and everything, and uh, I'll see you guys again on the next video. Bye.